So this tutorial is going to be for existing 3600 users that are currently using version 3 or 3.1 of the acquisition software and you are transitioning to CS ScanFlow. This is going to be a basic tutorial on how to do your normal scans. Uh, other features and other new features within ScanFlow will, will be covered in a different or in different videos. So first, you're going to select the scanner icon just like normal. And the first screen you're going to see is going to be your login screen. So with your existing versions, every single scan that you save, when you want to send to CS Connect or through CS Connect, it asks you for your credentials and you have to do it each time. Here, I can actually just log in once and then I stay logged in for a full week. What you're used to seeing on your initial screen also is the restorative, orthodontic, implant, and the import icons on your first screen. That forced you to choose your workflow prior to you actually scanning. The problem with that is that you're limited to the features that are within that particular workflow. With ScanFlow, you're simply going to just select scan or import an existing scan. Uh, and then you can choose your workflow later on the fly. So it makes it much easier. All the features within the software are going to be available for you for any of the workflows. So this is what your acquisition screen now looks like. You can see I'm logged in up here. If I click on this, I can switch my CS Connect accounts or I can sign out altogether. There's no next icons or next buttons and done buttons like you had in your version 3 or 3.1 that you would see down in the lower right hand portion of the screen. Those options to move the scan along in the workflow have now changed to these four icons along the top. You're going to scan, refine the data set, edit that data set, and then save and export through these icons along the top. So now every scan that you take is going to start out with a common scan. And you can choose additional workflow options like your pre and post or scan body or your impression scan. You can choose that after the fact. So every scan is going to start out with your common scan. And you can see that down below. Put my mouse over that icon. This is my common scan. Then if I want to change my workflow, from a normal restorative case to a pre and post or to a scan body case, I can select this little plus symbol. This is going to open up the options for taking additional scans. In other words, I can add my scan body, pre and post, my impression for the hybrid workflow, and under extras, this is basically where you can scan any additional uh, model, any additional appliance really anything that you want to incorporate into this particular case. So when the case goes to the lab, you can easily send all the data sets together within one send through CS Connect. Switching from upper to lower is now this icon over here. And once you have upper and lower, you'll be able to select your buckle bite options as well. One other feature that's also new is when I lift up my handpiece, you can now resize this acquisition screen, which is nice. You'll also notice when I first start scanning, notice all of the icons and the toolbars and everything are on the screen. As soon as I start scanning, everything disappears. So it lets you really focus what you're doing on what's being scanned and the tools and the icons and everything go away. I'm going to go ahead and finish scanning a quadrant of my initial common scan. You can see I scanned the lower arch, but I have the upper arch selected. This is now your switch button, so I can switch to the appropriate arch.
Okay, so now we've captured our quadrant, and you can see this looks a little bit different than what you're used to in versions 3 and 3.1. So in those versions, you normally would have your multiple byte dots down below, whether it's 2, 3, 4, whatever. Those byte dots signified each individual area where you captured your byte registration. Now, those byte dots are not going to be down below. So each individual byte record, that's now going to be within the occlusion gallery. So you can see that here. This is two of two. This is one of two. And you can see your actual area and your byte, rec your byte record changes as you move through the occlusion gallery. If one is incorrect and off and you need to delete it, you just hit the garbage can. Before, you would highlight the byte record that was off or the byte dot that was off and then hit the delete button on the keyboard. But now that's going to be done within the occlusion gallery. These byte dots uh, have to do with your multiple byte records. So in the preferences, if you have enable multiple byte capture on, then you're going to see these three dots. If you have, if you have this off, then you won't see those three dots, okay? And with it off, you're simply going to take one set of byte records and save it. But let's say you wanted to capture a normal CO byte and you wanted to capture, uh, put the patient in CR or maybe some sort of open byte in addition to your normal CO byte. Well, with this enabled, you can now capture different byte positions within the same record. You can just leave it enabled and then decide on a case-by-case -case basis if you need to take any additional byte records. This feature was also available in version 3.1. So this is going to be your normal byte. If I wanna take a secondary byte on this same scan, I just select this byte dot, put the patient into CR, for example, now take that uh, you know, two, three, or four byte records for that secondary CR byte, and then continue on from there. Once we finish scanning, you can see here we are on scan. There's no next or done like I mentioned earlier. You're going to progress through the workflow by moving on to check. So I select check. Now within the refinement process, I have three options. I can refine the data with low resolution, standard, or high resolution. Some of the applications you would use for one versus the other, low resolution, best described as scanning for study models. Standard resolution um, would include study models or uh, orthodontics or retainers or night guards, things like that. And HR would be for all crown and bridge type applications. You can also see under the status that you, um, you have these arches are green, meaning that there's no scan warnings. You can see how many byte records you have. If you had scan warnings, this would be in red and it would tell you you've got one scan warning or two scan warnings. You can either go back and rescan if it's important to the case or simply proceed with the refinement process. The speed of the refinement will obviously correlate to the resolution that you choose. So let's go ahead and select refinement. So now we are refined and my different color options to view the scan are now located with this little arrow and I can select my contrasted color mode or my monochromatic mode. And I'll cover these other features in a different video. Once that looks good, I can go right to export, all right? Under adapt, these are additional tools of the software which I'll cover in a different video, but I don't need to go into this. I can go right to exporting the scan or saving the scan. To send the scan through CS Connect, all I have to do is select uh, CS Connect, highlight it, select Send. You can see that's automatically going to save the scan in my patient record 
and automatically launch CS Connect so I can go ahead and send it to the lab. And you can see that here. First, it's saving the actual data. And now it's launching the actual CS Connect application automatically. I don't have to log in with credentials because we already did that earlier, as I showed you, and I'm staying logged in. At this point, you should know what to do. Submit your case through CS Connect, and you're good to go.